This is Dazzling One, and the topic of the week is organ harvesting by illegal means. Whether it is looted graves, crooked morticians, paid donors, which are usually paid very little from third world nations, executed prisoners, live prisoners, and blood farms. It is in an unregulated market, or is it? In the United States, Kendrick Johnson, a Georgia teen, died at school. January of 2013. The local sheriff quickly determined the death was a freak accident, that he suffocated after getting stuck in a rolled up mat in the school gym. Johnson's parents, however, could not, would not accept that. Six months after his death, they obtained a court order to have the body exhumed for an independent autopsy. The pathologist was stunned when he found the corpse stuffed with newspaper. The brain, heart, lungs, and liver were missing. He also discovered Johnson's death was due to blunt force trauma to the right side of his neck. Kendrick Johnson's case is not an isolated incident. The black market organs are being transplanted in New York, Philadelphia, Los Angeles at 150000 a pop. There are broker-friendly U.S. hospitals complete with surgeons who either don't know or don't care where the organs come from. Today, 120 1,771 people are waiting for an organ, and 18 will die every day while waiting. Just one donor has the ability to save up to eight lives. Where there's a demand, there's a way. Sometimes organs are even harvested from a living victim for compensation. In the worst case, it involves kidnapping for the purpose of organ harvesting. Always at the end of the chain is a wealthy recipient willing to pay big bucks with no questions asked. Concerning organ harvesting in third world countries, impoverished villagers may sell an organ for several hundred dollars. In a Bangladesh slum, it may be a choice between someone losing their home or losing their kidney. According to Montezuman of Michigan State University, assistant professor of anthropology, most organ sellers don't know what a kidney is. In third world countries, villagers are persuaded by the idea that selling a liver lobe is a win-win situation. A noble, lucrative act that can save a lifetime and is harmless and safe. Even after donating organs, some villagers will be asked by recruiters to go recruit others to make more money for their family. And in other cases, organ harvesting is tied to human trafficking. Most think of sex trafficking when the word human trafficking is uttered. But organ harvesting is another dark side of it. Children sold into slavery or a life of sexual abuse are also used for their organs. Firstly, there are cases where traffickers force or deceive the victims into giving up an organ. Secondly, there are cases where victims formally or informally agree to sell an organ and are cheated because they are not paid for the organ or are paid less than a promised price. Thirdly, vulnerable persons are treated for an ailment which may or may not exist and thereupon organs are removed without the victim's knowledge. The vulnerable categories of persons include migrants, especially migrant workers, homeless persons, illiterate persons. It is known that trafficking for organ trade could occur with persons of any age. Organs that are commonly traded are kidneys, liver, and the like. Any organ which can be removed and used could be subject of such a legal trade. Trafficking in organ trade is an organized crime involving a host of offenders. The recruiter who identifies the vulnerable person, the transporter, the staff of the hospital, clinic, and other medical centers, the medical professionals, the middlemen and contractors, the buyers, the banks where organs are stored are all involved in a racket. It is a fact that the entire racket is rarely exposed and therefore the dimensions are yet to be appropriately fathomed. If that's not bad enough, then you can look at blood farms in nations like India, aka the red market. Beside a dairy farm was a blood farm. Inside that blood farm were people strung up with blood drainage equipment. Blood was continuously drained from their dying bodies by lab technicians for profit. What is even worse about this is the blood factory was keeping the hospital supplied with blood. Most of their victims were offered money and picked up at a bus and train station. However, they grew tired of looking for more people. So what did they do? They offered them a place to stay and then through coercion, padlocks, 
They were prisoners until the last ounce of blood was drained. Even in prisons, organs are stolen. 6,000 prisoners are executed in China each year. William Schultz, executive director of Amnesty International USA, told reporters about 90% of transplanted kidneys come from these executed prisoners. This leads to conspiracy theories that mysterious deaths in prison may be for this reason. The kidney is the most sought after in the black market. According to the World Health Organization, approximately 10,000 kidneys are illegally harvested annually by traffickers worldwide, and the prices vary widely by country. The profits are huge, and money is a temptation many brokers and doctors just cannot resist. The black market has ties to abortion clinics who sell the baby's body parts to the highest bidders. And sadly enough, in the case of crooked morticians, typically a broker from a black market will team up with the funeral home director, forging consent forms and a death certificate to harvest human tissue before the body is cremated or buried. Unfortunately, international body brokers, which are people who may dig up the dead or just steal organs from the dead, make a fortune from looting graves as well. But to me, the worst case in which someone's organs are stolen is when someone is declared brain dead in the hospital. Contrary to the belief concerning posthumous voluntary organ donations, doctors may speed up the death of the patient, overdosing them with muscle relaxers, paralyze them to give them symptoms of a comatose state. Doctors will encourage a family to let go of their loved one in conclusion, organ harvesting is a lucrative business. While there are volunteers willing to donate, more often than not, there are people whose organs are stolen. I hope that this video was informative to you and that you have a wonderful week. Take care and Yahweh bless you.